most of the learning of a piece of music is mental. The physical component is actually a, a lesser part of learning anything new. Greetings everyone, and welcome back to Pep Organ. Today I've got a special video for you, which is related to my injury, which I've talked about in the past. Um, sadly, I'm still recovering from a mild case of tennis elbow, which means that too much practice is really not a good idea for me at the moment. I'm still in recovery, and of course that's why I haven't been uploading as much as I would like to, and apologies for that. But today I thought I'd take advantage of my injury and do a challenge which I thought you would find interesting. I'm going to be learning this piece of by Mozart. It's the Andante from the Piano Concerto number 21, um, which is very famous, of course, but I'm going to be learning the organ transcription of it. But I'm going to learn it without touching the organ at all. How am I going to do this? Well, uh, I've thought of a solution to learning music without having to actually play the keys. And it's something that I call silent practice. But beyond that, it's silent practice without even using your hands or feet to play. What I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to show you the process that I go through to learn a new piece of music without ever playing on the keyboard. You may think this is impossible, but it is actually quite possible. Basically, there's a few things I need to talk about before jumping into this challenge. Firstly, this method of learning only applies to pieces of music that you sort of know how it sounds orally, or if not orally, you've had a listen to how it sounds, so listen to a recording on YouTube. Uh, you also need to have a piece of music where the harmonic structure is not too complicated. If it's a piece of music like Messian, you're going to need to think a lot more about uh, how you can play on the keyboard all the different notes and clusters. But for something like Mozart, I chose this piece because the number of chords is fairly uh, limited, and it's chords that I should mostly be able to work out without having to actually sit at an organ and bash it out. I chose this music because the left hand is completely independent from the right hand, and that means that I don't have to spend time sitting in an organ working out how to substitute fingers and take you know, notes with the left hand or with the right hand and all those kind of things. To do that, you really do need to sit at an instrument and work it out. But for a piece where the left hand, right hand and pedals are independent, it's a lot easier to kind of work out what each part and what each hand position will be at any given time. So the first thing I do is I go through the pages on its own and I decided to give myself one hour to do this. Uh, this you know, times may vary depending on the piece, but I thought I'd take an hour. There's about 10 pages here. Yeah, 10 pages. And what I did first was just look at the pedals and the left hand, uh, because that's the part without the melody. So you have these repeated triplets with this piece, and the pedal line is fairly consistent throughout. It's just a matter of remembering where the chord changes are. Uh, when you get further into the piece, of course, it starts to get a little bit more complicated. The left hand starts taking uh, notes of its own that it has to hold, and there's more chord changes and more more notes in those chords, of course. Um, things like diminished, you know, uh, dominant seventh chords and things. Um, there are chords like this, of course, and uh, the pedal line you can see does start to move around a little bit. So that's why I just broke it up at first, and I just play the pedal part and the left hand. Not play them actually, but I think about how they would be played, and I. Um, I really imagine a keyboard in front of me when I'm thinking about this, and I try and imagine where the hand positions go. My theory about all of this, by the way, is that most of the learning of a piece of music is mental. The physical component is actually a, a lesser part of learning anything new. Really what you're trying to do is actually imagine where your hands are going to be placed at any given time, and essentially when you piece that together, stitch it together, um, you end up with a piece of music. What you don't get, of course, unless you really know the piece well, is the stylistic elements, like how we're going to play it, um, with how long the trills are going to go for, uh, where the chords have to be sort of enjoyed and it needs to be a bit more rubato and things like that. But since I do know this piece, I think I can kind of grasp where they should be put in. So the left hand and pedals come together like that, and then the right hand comes in on top. And essentially that's just learning the melody, how it goes, and uh, how I'm going to put the trills and all those things like that. And finally, I can put the three parts together and actually try and imagine myself playing the whole piece. And if your mind can't keep up with the notes on the page, uh, that means that you're going too fast. Like I said, this is mostly a mental exercise of learning a new piece of music. 
So if you can't actually think about where your hands would be at any given time, then there's no chance you're gonna be able to do it with your actual hands on an actual instrument on, on the organ. So that's why I say that it's actually not just a challenge that I'm doing for the sake of you know a, a challenge, an interesting video and some fun. I think this is genuinely a way to learn a piece of music. There was this famous story that I heard once about a pianist who, uh, a concert pianist who was traveling overseas and had to learn a piece of music. But the problem was he was given it too late and he could only learn it on the plane. Now he actually did learn the whole piece of music and perform it in front of a concert audience. So what he did is essentially what I'm talking about here. He looked at the score for a couple hours and then was able to grasp together all the things he would need to do to create that performance. You don't have to have an instrument in front of you to do all of these things. In fact, if you actually sit and just look at the chords, you may actually spot what you need to correct more quickly than in case you were actually sitting at an instrument and were just relying on your ear. Your ear can often deceive you because especially uh, with modern music, the chord may not be what you think it is when you hear it. And so you have to actually know that chord by studying the actual page. Well, if you're studying the page, you're basically doing what I said, which is visual study of the score, which requires no instrument. Now, I know that people who are following the channel may not have the same kind of harmonic knowledge that I have. If you don't know these kind of basic chords that Mozart uses, if you haven't done music theory and those kind of things, this is going to be a lot harder for you because you're going to have to look at every single chord and identify it as you go. I still think it's possible as long as you have the visual capacity to imagine a keyboard and imagine where your hands should go on that keyboard. I think this is still a possible challenge, but this is really where you come into the challenge and I'd love to hear how you guys tackle this. So here's what the challenge is gonna involve. I'm gonna study the score for one hour and for that one hour, I am not gonna to touch the score at all. So I'm not gonna add any markings or anything in. That's the first part. Then after an hour, I'm then gonna have uh, 15 minutes to write in my markings. So those markings will be just a few little things to help me along the way. Um, rubatos I always write into my scores, just to remind me. Um, some fingerings may need to be written in, some phrasing, dynamics, things like that. Uh, probably not dynamics for this one, but um, all those other things may need to be written in. There are some manual changes in this piece, and so I'm gonna just emphasize those. You know, I'm just gonna emphasize where they're indicated, just so I don't forget. These are all sort of uh, little cheats you can do, even if you're not doing this method. Uh, if you write in things, it's always easier uh, later on. And I did do a video about practice techniques, which you can watch uh, as well. But for now, let's start with the one hour, and then we'll do some uh, 15 minutes of writing in some markings, and then I'm gonna give you the raw performance. And I swear, I, I promise you that I'm not going to be cheating with this, this will be the performance with not having played it ever before, exactly as it is, one hour and 15 minutes of study, and there it is, the organ. So, I hope you look forward to that. Well, I've had my one hour of study and I'm feeling fairly all right. I have got a general sense of where all the chords are gonna go. Uh, there's a few little spots towards the middle where I feel like it's gonna, something's gonna go wrong. Maybe the pedaling, um, because I'm juggling quite a few things. I've got some held left hand notes. I've got right hands doing trills and things. Um, that may go wrong. But on the whole, I feel like I do know what I'm doing. And now is my chance. Uh, I've got 15 minutes to write in my uh, markings, so let's do that. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is obviously just write in, we've got a, the swell here and the grate here, uh, just so I don't forget. And um, all these chords are fine, I have to, don't have to worry too much about any of these. Um, right, going over the page, we can see there's quite a major jump. So we've got from F major chords up to the, well, it's F seven, but the chord position has changed quite dramatically. So what I'll do is I'll just write in 
an arrow sign. This is going to tell me that I need to turn the page quickly. Um, that's a note that I need to look out for as well, that low A. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to write that it's an A, just so I remember. Going on, um, we have some diminished chords here. Nothing too scary though. We have a weirdly it's kind of spelt a diminished chord here. I wasn't too happy about how the transcription actually wrote out some of its chords, but it's not too bad. It can, it can be managed. Now here we've got an indication for both hands going into the choir, eight and four. So I'll have my choir prepared from the start of the piece, of course, but basically telling me to go to the choir for both hands here. Just make, make, make that really clear for myself. Oh, here's something I almost forgot. There's an instruction here for the grate there. So that actually means I need to have the grate prepared back here. Just put the grate there and put a marking because it's right over the page. And then here we're back on the choir, so I'll write that in too. Back to the grate. I'm not actually sure how well this will sound. I may actually prefer to change this when I do a final recording, but for now I'll just go with what's, what's instructed because uh, I'm not going to apply too much liberty at this point. This is the part that I was talking about before that's really quite difficult. You can see that I've got left hand notes going all over the place. We've got chords that have to be, um, you know, held, notes that have to be held while the right hand is having its own melody in quite a high register and the pedals don't have quite the easiest part when it's jumping up and down like that. Um, really quite a tough thing that I've just, I spent most of my hour actually looking at pages like this where there's a lot going on. You want to really make sure you use the most of your time with these kind of parts. You notice the spots like here where there's quite a large leap. We've gone from the treble clef up uh, in the middle register down to the bass really quickly. But fortunately, looking at the melody, it's one of those kind of points where we have a refrain and I'm just going to write in my rubato instruction. And I'm going to use that to cheat a little so that I have a bit more time to get down there. Probably uh, something I'll do in the performance anyway, but something I just need to note here. And the final part is just a swell indication, and that seems like it's mostly it. So there we go. Completed.
So there you have it, a performance of Mozart's and Dante from Concerto Number no. 21. Uh, if you're a musician, and especially if you know this piece, you probably heard quite a few of the mistakes that I made. But perhaps if you don't know the piece, or if you aren't much of a musician yourself, then perhaps you may believe that I played it very well. And this is also a good reminder to us that uh, quite often a lot of the audience don't really know what on earth we're doing. And as long as the general gist of the piece is correct, then they'll be happy. Anyway, I'm going to keep practicing this piece um, the normal way now, and I hope you enjoy this video. I'll have a polished version of this piece uh, for the channel at some point, so look forward to that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.